There's 3D printing, electronics, lasers, printer corners, and other stuff too. For the software portion of this project, you're going to need to have Arduino, and you can get that on either Mac or PC. I would just grab the latest version. That seems to be fine. And then you're also going to need to be able to install and run Python, and I will be covering how to do that. Okay, make sure you install the library from Pololu. Um, there's actually multiple BL573L0X ones. I accidentally installed the Adafruit one, um, but you actually need the Pololu one. So it says right here in the um, in the uh, instructions. Also make sure that you install the correct board. So you should be able to pick tools, board, and then um, Arduino Zero. Uh, if it doesn't show up, you might have to install it. Doesn't look like um, mine's gonna show up, so I'm gonna have to add a board manager. Okay, and then basically if you go to boards manager tools, and then um, board boards manager, you're gonna get this screen here. Search for Arduino Zero and then hit install. That's gonna install your um, the board that you need in order for this to compile properly. It's gonna download and then once it downloads, you should be able to uh, select it from the menu. Okay, after installing that board, now I can select it and I should, if I did everything right, I should be able to compile it successfully now just by hitting verify. So I've got my library added and then I've got um, the board selected. So yep, done compiling. Now the next step is just to plug in the USB and then hit the upload button. Upload, uh, there is a configuration.h file. Um, so it looks like, you know, you can certainly go in here and tweak things if you wanted to. I don't know that there's anything at this point that I need to tweak, so I'm just gonna probably leave it alone. Okay, I plugged in my USB cord that was included. And um, once I did that, I was able to see this port show up. So I'm gonna go ahead and select that. And then I'm gonna click the upload button. And with any luck, uh, it's gonna find it and upload. So it says uploading. Um, okay, done uploading. Looks like, yep, oh, and I just heard a servo. So it looks like it uh, did work. All right, so that was kind of the, probably the easier step. Um, if you want, you can scroll through and look at all these messages. So you should get true and it should say done uploading. Oh, interesting. So the, the gripper just kind of open and close. Hopefully that's part of the program and not a glitch with the servo. Um, I guess that's, that's a good sign. I think. So I do not have power run to this, so it's not gonna be able to do anything with the stepper motors. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and unplug this. So I'm not really sure what it's trying to do. That's counting on power. And then the next thing I'm gonna do is um, install Python and everything required there. Okay, so the directions written here are more geared towards Windows users. As you can see, I'm on a Mac. So um, not a big deal, I've installed Python before. However, I have not installed it on this laptop. But basically, you're gonna have to install Python 2.7. Um, and then once you do that, you can download, uh, or you can run this uh, SCARA control, whatever the version number is. So those links are right here. You're gonna download it, the latest code here. Um, but you're also going to need to install all these libraries. Um, not not really a big deal, but um, if you don't if you've never done it before, it might take you a little time to get through this step. But I'm going to go ahead and document everything. Okay, so you can go to the python.org/downloads, and then um, in here you can find the version that it's asking for. You're just going to go ahead and hit download, and then there's a bunch of different options. Just pick the one that makes the most sense for you. Um, since I'm running Mac OS. Uh, 10.9 and later. I'm just going to try and do this uh, Mac 64-bit installer. I think that'll probably be the one I want. So after it downloads, you can click on the link um, and then just kind of next through it. Agree. Oops. And after you uh, authenticate, it's going to basically 
run everything. It doesn't take very long. Probably depends partly on your system too. All right, so that's done. Move it to the trash. All right, I'm installing one of the packages. I'm just going through the list that's on the website. Um, the way you're gonna install this is you're gonna use, the way, or the way I'm using it is with PIP, Python install package, and you're gonna type in pip uh, install, and then the package and the version number. So I'll, I'll show that here with the next package with NumPy. Okay, so here's the format. You're just gonna get shell out the terminal. Um, you can do this on Windows, should be able to do this on Windows or Mac, and then just basically type that in and it should find the package and the version number. So I'm going exa by exactly what is listed on the website uh, with the packages. So um, that way you know you're gonna, your code should work for all the packages uh, that are listed. So I just did, I already did matplotlib and numpy. I'm gonna do OpenCV, Pygame, Pillow, and PySerial. And once you get through all those, you should be able to run the Python app. Okay, unfortunately, Pillow 7.0 did not install, so I just installed, uh, it looks like they deprecated um, Python 2.7, um, but I did install version 6.2.2, hopefully that'll work. Okay, after installing all the libraries, I'm downloading the latest version 32, clicking on the download button. Um, once that's installed, I'm gonna just open it and give it a go. Okay, this process should be pretty similar on a PC, but you're gonna double click on the Python file, the SCARA control. Okay, then you're gonna, you should have a run option, and then you can go, you can either hit F5 or hit run module. So once you hit run module, if everything installed properly, you should see your uh, robot screen. Now I don't have mine plugged in yet, um, or the USB plugged in, so it says it's offline, but I should be able to plug that in and get it going. Okay, I just plugged it in and um, it looks like it did some kind of startup routine that unfortunately I didn't capture on camera. Okay, um, after a little trial and error, I went into config and I selected the port and I hit okay. And then I clicked activate robot. Once I did that, it said it's online. So now I'm gonna, oh, now it's moving. It looks like it's actually reverse what I would expect but it is moving, which is cool. That's, wow, that's pretty slick. Um, hmm, yeah, really neat. Unfortunately, it's almost exactly opposite, so that probably means that I have, it could mean that I have the uh, motors backwards or something, I don't know. But that's good news, it's, it's actually moving. So all I'm doing is clicking on the, the app and just kind of moving around. So I'm gonna see if I can get the gripper to do something. I'm not sure how to do that actually. Okay, so through some trial and error, I discovered that my motor wires were plugged in backwards. I also think I had the servos in wrong, so. But after messing around for a little bit, now I've got the robot arm basically doing what I think it should be doing. Um, I can also raise the robot arm and lower it uh, with the up and down keys if I go into real time motion, which is, it gets kind of crazy, but just by moving the mouse, you can see the arm moving. And then um, I'm, if I hit the up arrow, the Z moves up and down. It's very faint movements, so it doesn't move a whole lot there, but it does move. I can also turn the wrist by using the arrow keys so again, pretty pretty faint movements. So everything's looking pretty good now. Okay, after um, messing around with the wiring, um, I actually had a bad stepper as well. Luckily I had a spare, um, but now I've got everything working and it seems to be operating as I would expect. So I should be able to move the wrist, raise the Z, Everything's going as I would expect it to. So you do have to calibrate it. It's a calibration button. Um, so you can kind of set the height. All right, well that about concludes the build series and I hope it's been helpful for you. Um, there are a few things that I'd like to point out on the software. 
Uh, and I, I really have a lot, a lot of things that I still want to try. So if you double click on the mouse pad when you're running the Python code, it'll open and close the claw. Um, if you use the up and down arrow, it'll raise the, raise and lower the Z. Uh, there's also, uh, and if you use the, the arrow, the right and left arrow, it'll turn the, the wrist. So there's quite a bit of functionality in the software. You can also get a leap sensor, which I think are around $60 and you can use hand gestures and go like this. Um, to open and close the claw. I don't have one of those, but uh, I've seen that in the video on the JJ Robot site. And if you have an Xbox controller, um, I believe the S will work with Bluetooth. The non-S, uh, the older ones will work with uh, a wire, but you can also control it using the control pad. So there's quite a few ways to control this, and I'm looking forward to playing around with it some more. It is a really cool project. Um, the accuracy seems to be really good. One one challenge that I have right now is that my servo is getting really hot, and I think it's because, um, I'm not sure if it's because of the way I oriented it, maybe I got the orientation wrong with the horn, or if it's because it's just a cheaper servo. I know the one that they had in the, the video that they, they were showing was a metal one, so I may try and replace that with like an MG92 instead of an SG92. But beyond that, uh, I, th I think this is a really cool project, a lot of fun, and um, I'm definitely looking forward to playing around with it.